Again, welcome. I want to welcome everybody watching online and to all the moms that are home. I pray that your children are rising up and calling you blessed in Jesus' beautiful name. Amen. Well, today we want to talk and continue about honoring moms. We honor moms here at Capitol not because it's a holiday, but because it's a lifestyle. How many know that it's a lifestyle that God calls us to, to honor moms and dads? And by, in fact, the Bible says it this way in Ephesians chapter 5. It says, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Can, can I just get a big amen right there? What is one of the most frustrating things about being a parent? My kids won't listen. How many, how many would your life, the quality of your life, would just improve immensely if your children just listened? I want you to think about that for a moment. If your kids just oh, were obedient, uh, you would probably be like, wow, wow, that is amazing. <laughs> for this is honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise that it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. When we honor our parents, God says this is so important that when you honor your parents, I'm going to give you blessing that you live long on the earth. Here's the way my mom used to say it to me. I brought you in. Did your mom say the same thing? I brought you in. So as long as it's like it was, it was, it was beneficial for me to obey and honor my mom uh, so that I could live long on the earth. <laughs> Come on, somebody. But today we want to talk about honoring moms, but not just our natural moms, but they're also spiritual moms. And I want you to look at what the, the apostle Paul says here in, in Romans chapter 16. He says, greet Rufus, greet Rufus, that special servant of the Lord, and greet his mother, who has been like a mother to me. We don't know anything about this woman. All we know is that she had a profound impact on the apostle's life. See, there's this thing of spiritual mothering as well. And, and we all need a mother's love. Can you give me an amen for that? How many can say we, we need a mother's love? A mother's love is truly transformational, but a mother's love is literally and actually very hard work. So I want to talk about hard work that moms get to do, whether it's a biological mom or a spiritual mom. Here's number one. It's hard work to give birth to us. <laughs> Look what the scripture says. Even Jesus made this statement in John chapter 16. He says, a woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time, everybody say her time. Or let's just say it like this. All the guys say her time. I'm so thankful it's her time and not my time. Can I get a high five from my brothers right now? It's like, come on, somebody. I'm glad it's her time and not my time. I mean, it was stressful enough just being there and trying to get her to breathe. It, just, just breathe. That was stressing me out. Come on, somebody. Then, then you, you, you just watch as they go through labor, incredible, tremendous pain, and then all of a sudden, bam. You pop out this little guy, and we say little guy that's six, seven, eight, nine, ten pounds, and we sit there and like, whoa, man, you whoa more man than I am right now because it's like that's unbelievable. And it goes on to say, but when the baby has come, she forgets the anguish because her joy that a child was born into the world. So we watch moms biologically, bodies start changing. They start going through this metamorphosis of carrying this child for nine months. And often when they're first pregnant, they get morning sickness and nausea because they're trying to eradicate the alien that has just invested them and, and taking over their life. They, they become insatiable with eating anything and everything that seems to be in sight. And, and then there's always seems to be this weird 
craving for something that you don't have in the house that's usually needed right around bedtime. And it's a crisis emergency that the husband must leave and go get it. Right? Come on, somebody. And, and then they go through all of this anguish to give birth, the Bible says. And then when they give birth, when they give birth, they forget the pain of going to the labor and they forget the pain of the pregnancy for the joy of it creating a brand new human being. Come on, somebody. It's just amazing to watch that process happen, that all of a sudden this mother is now holding this brand new creation and all of a sudden it becomes one of the most life changing moments in a woman's life and even in a father's, but it becomes incredibly transformational. And all of a sudden she goes from anguish to joy because a child has been born. But just like we need biological mothers, we also need spiritual mothers as well who will carry us in a spiritual womb. Here's what the apostle says in Galatians chapter four. He says, my little children, my little children, again, I feel the pain of childbirth for you until you truly become like Christ. How many know that not only do we give birth to biological children, we give birth to spiritual children. And the Bible equates giving birth to spiritual children the same as the pain and the anguish and the discomfort of labor that a woman would go through. And there's this place where we need to get carry people in our hearts and to begin to pray for them and intercede for them. We need to be able to carry them in our inner person and ask God to do an incredible transformation. So just like a mama, every time she feels that baby kick in her belly, Every time she feels that baby kick in her belly, every time we feel that little nudge on the inside of us, we, we need to start praying for them. We need to start declaring. And I, I, I want to encourage you, whether it's a biological child or a spiritual child, while that child is in the womb, start speaking things into existence. Start declaring, just like we did. We're declaring they will bring forth their gifts and talents. We're declaring they will serve the Lord all the days of their life. You begin to declare. Some of us, we've got some children that we've given birth to biologically but we're, we're grieving for them and we're anguished for them because we want to see them born of the Spirit as well because we know that when they're born of the Spirit, then we can relax and rest. And so we're in anguish for them. We travail for them. And I just want to encourage you, just as you carry them in the womb of your Spirit, begin to intercede and begin to prophesy and begin to declare over their lives that God would accomplish His purposes in their life. Every time you get uncomfortable and feel that discomfort, begin to pray and intercede. Just like a mama, you ever see pregnant mamas, they're always rubbing their bellies. They're stretching, they're rubbing their bellies, they're feeling the baby kick. The psalmist said in one, Psalms 139, he says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. This my soul knows really well because you covered me in my mother's womb. Oh, come on, somebody. I am the byproduct of my mama's faith. My mom would pray for me and intercede for me to serve the purposes of God. And no matter how much I tried to run from them, she interceded for me. And it allowed God to intervene in my life. I want to encourage us. There are people who need our prayers that we need to labor and intercede for until Christ is formed in them. Here's the second thing that makes being a mom hard. It, it, it's hard to feed and nurture us especially when they're very little. Come on, when they're very little, they, 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 I always like to ask new moms, are you getting any sleep? And they look at me like, what is that, right? What is that? Because the little guy, the little gal, they always want to get up in the middle of the night, right? And they're always wanting to be fed. And, and, and they're waiting to, they, I, I think it's a conspiracy. I think they want to wait till you are in your deepest rim sleep, and then they wake up saying, hey, you need to come and feed me. They, and, then, and then when you are awake, have you ever noticed that when you are awake, then they want to go to sleep? It's almost like they need a bodyguard. It's like, if you're asleep, then I need to wake up to wake you up. But if I'm asleep, you need to be awake so I know that I'm safe. And so they're almost like this little, this little 
thing that drives them in there, and it, so it becomes, it becomes exhausting and frustrating, especially when they're little. But listen, we said it earlier a minute ago, when is it the most frustrating to be a mom? When your children won't listen. But can I say this? It's a mother's legacy to teach us and train us. Look what the scripture says in Proverbs 22. It says, train children in the way they should go. Train them. Train them. Train them in the way that they should go. And when they grow old, they won't depart from it. That's our job as moms and dads and as spiritual mentors that we're training them in the way that they should go. We have to trust that when they get older, they're not going to depart from it. And when we're training them, just like a mother has to nurse a child for it to grow, we need to feed them the wisdom of God. We need to encourage them in the ways of God. And I'm saying this because I want you to understand you have more influence than I think many times we realize. We often want to see somebody do the right thing. We often want to see our children do the right thing. And we often kind of sometimes feel that they're not really listening to us. But can I encourage you, just like a mother, when she's nursing, that child is growing. When you begin to constantly speak the word of God and you begin to encourage with the word of God, it, it, you can't help but begin to absorb that. That's what this scripture is promising, that if you're just speaking the word of God to them and you're teaching the word of God to them, you're creating culture in them. You're creating a belief system in them. You're declaring something over over them. I encourage you to constantly be feeding them. Come on. Every mom wants to feed her child the best stuff. That's why many, when they get pregnant, will stop maybe certain habits. Maybe if they smoke, they'll stop smoking or, or certain dietary things, they'll change. Why? Because they want to provide the best food for their child. This is why you and I have to take in the wisdom of God so we can begin to feed the wisdom of God. Look what Proverbs 31 says this about moms. Her mouth is full of wisdom. Just like a, a, a child that's breastfeeding, her, her, her milk is full of nutrients. Her mouth is full of wisdom. Kindly teaching is in her tongue. Unless you make her mad, then, then there's something else there. But, but I want you to see something, even from the life of Jesus, about the power of training. Because how many know... We're, we're trying to help a child know what not to do and what to do. And in Luke chapter in Luke chapter 2, Jesus is like 12 years old. Mom and dad, they, they get in the caravan, they're leaving, and they get several days down the road, and they realize Jesus is not with them. They left without Jesus. Come on, somebody. His parents didn't know what to think. What did we do with Jesus? And they finally found him. They said, son... His mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Said every mother to every child at some point in their life. Why have you done this to us? I just want you to know, this is Mary talking to Jesus. I'm pretty sure you're not raising a Jesus. But even Jesus, this is goes on. Your father and I have been frantic searching everywhere for you. I am not, I'm, I'm sure that she's coming with some energy. And Jesus comes off with the, here's a 12-year-old, here's a response. Didn't you know that I needed to be about my father's business? I can almost hear Mary saying, I'm about to send you back to your father right now. <laughs> right? You just got to see the humanity in Scripture. You just got to see dirt. They're like, we lost our 12-year-old. And he's got this calling on his life. He's got this destiny. He's got these dreams. But here's what mom's saying. Jesus, I know you want to save the world, but not today. I know you want to change the world, but not today. Today, it's not a good idea, Jesus, for you to be this way. And it goes on to say, I know I'm messing with some of you, but I'm just reading the Bible to you. Then he returned to Nazareth and was obedient to them. Are you catching this? Mary began to say, Jesus, I need you to be th lean this way a little bit. She's training him. She's training him. Even Jesus received training from his mother. Later in life, when he was, they were at this wedding, and they'd been there for several days, and they were running out of wine, 
Jesus comes to his mother in, in Luke in John chapter two, and he says, Jesus replied, she, she said, we need some wine. And Jesus replied, mom, my time has not yet come. Listen to this. You must not tell me what to do. Mary doesn't even get into it. Mary doesn't even get into it. Mary just said to the servants, servants, do whatever he tells you to do. She understands she's got influence. Jesus is like 30 years old. He's still telling her. It's like, look, Jesus, when you were 12, I told you to back off a little bit. Now I need you just to get going. I know you can do some miracles. I know you can do some things. And she's calling out his ministry. She's calling out his greatness. She's calling out his calling. And what mom can't see great things in her child that need to be called out, need to be encouraged, need to be inspired, and need to be believed in. And this is the whole idea of training, whether it's telling them we need to, we need to put the brakes on some things or we need to inspire them to do some things. We're training them in the way that they should go there are some things we need to say to people don't go there yet or don't go that way and there are also some things you need to get busy you need to step up to the plate you need to get going there's greatness in you and I want you to see this was Mary speaking to Jesus and if Mary had to do it with Jesus she had influence and I'm saying to you you have influence influence. If you don't believe you have influence, you'll give away your influence. But wisdom is in your mouth, whether you realize it or not. Begin to declare, God, I need your wisdom to speak life over this child, their future, and their destiny. Here's number three. It's hard being a mom. It's hard being a mom because it's hard work to clean up after us. You, you know, when the little guy's born, you know, you put the diaper on him. And you're, you're looking for, you know, I mean, you're looking for number one and number two, right? You get number one and you get number two. You know, okay, we got a healthy child. The plumbing's working. You know, like, yay, we got one and two. We got a healthy child. Praise the Lord. We're all happy. Then a year later, it's like, that's a mess. We need to potty train this child. We need to get this child potty trained. And so we start potty training. And then they come and tell us, I went potty. And then our next question is, but where? Where did you go, buddy? And they just, they, children are amazing for making messes for us to clean up. We clean the house, they mess it up. You know, we make the dinner, they don't like it. We clean their clothes, they get them dirty. We paint the walls, they paint it with crayons. No matter where we go and what we do, they're constantly coming along, creating messes for us to clean up. Even Jesus' family, his mother, felt like she needed to clean up one of his messes. One day, he, he's, he's in this, and in, in, it's, in, it's in Mark chapter 3, and, and before I read this verse, you just got to get the backdrop of it. He goes to church one day. He's got his disciples with him, and he's about to heal somebody. And he knows if he heals on the Sabbath, he's going to make all the Pharisees mad. And so he's like, hey, hey, guys, I'm going to tick these guys off today. I'm going to heal on the Sabbath. And, and sure enough, he healed. They're getting all furious. Then he goes and casts out the devil. He's casting the devil out of people. And they're saying, yeah, but he's doing that by the power of the devil. So now they're attacking him for that. In fact, he gets so many people coming to the house. He gets so many people coming to the house. There's such a mob coming to his house. He tells the disciples, hey, guys, we, we better get a boat ready. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. <laughs> this is kind of getting out of hand. Just keep the boat ready so we can get out of here. In fact, it got so busy, the Bible says, they didn't even have time to eat. His mom said, this is getting crazy. This isn't. And when his family heard this, they went to get him because they thought he was out of his mind. Have you ever had your mom say that to you? Are you out of your mind? Are you crazy? Again, here is Mary speaking to Jesus are you out of your mind? He's got all of this going on. He's getting everything all stirred up. And you know, what, you know how Jesus responded to this? Do you want to know how Jesus responded? So mom, they, they come and says, Jesus, your mother and brothers are at the door. Here was Jesus' response. Who is my mother and brother but those who sit here with me? Oh, I'm, I'm sure that went over really well with Mary at that moment. But here's, 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 here's the crux of the spiritual mom. We need, we need people who will help us put the pieces of our life back together after we've broken. Look what the Bible says in Isaiah. In Isaiah 66, 
It says, as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. How many know we never stop making messes? I, I still make messes. We go through life and all of a sudden we have hurts, we have setbacks, and we need the comfort of a mother. We have, we, we have relationship pains, sometimes that end in divorces. We have career setbacks. We have health setbacks. We have miscarriages. We have losses in our life. And what do we look for? We look for the comfort of a mother. And this is why, make, this is why when we lose a mom, it becomes so painful. This is why it's like, who is going to help me get my life back together now? Who's going to help me put the pieces of my life back together now? And this is why God gives us this beautiful thing called his church, gives us this thing called his family to help us when our lives fall apart and we don't have that biological mama anymore, that we have a place where we can be put back together. See, to believe means to be established. And when we put our faith in God and he gives us this beautiful thing called family, and this is why I encourage everybody, build community into your life because there will be those days is when you find yourself, I've made a mess of things. I've made a mess of things. It's good to have those people that can help us put our lives back together to gather. And here's the fourth thing. It's hard to work. It's hard work to watch our children suffer. The most rewarding thing is the birth of a child. The most frustrating thing is to try to teach a child. But the most painful thing is to watch your child suffer and you know that you can't do anything about it. Maybe they've got a disease ravaging their body and you, you're watching this happen and it it's creating so much anguish and pain. Maybe you've got an adult child that is just struggling with substance abuse and you, you know that they've just given themselves to their addiction and it's creating this pain in you because you're watching them live on a course in a direction and you're seeing that. Or maybe, maybe they're facing some kind of legal problems that you can't fix because they got in with the wrong people. Here, here's, here's, here's what the scripture says. It says, can a woman forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of her womb? Regardless of how jacked up we get, how messed up we get, how much pain we create, we still need a mother's unconditional love. We still need you to pray for us. We still need you to teach us. We still need you to help us put the life back together. And we need your unconditional love because if anybody can reach us at the lowest points and the points of our despair what is it it's a mother's love but that mother's love isn't just biological that mother's love can be spiritual and God can put a love in us that can reach into the most hurting of people and pull that forward so here's my question as I conclude this message is it time for you is it time for me to honor the faith of my mom? Is it time for me to honor their faith? Paul said this in 2 Timothy. To Timothy, he says, Remembering of the genuine faith that is in you. Timothy, you're a great leader. You're going you're gonna to take over this incredible work that I'm leaving behind. And Timothy was Paul's apprentice. And he says, I'm remembering the genuine faith that is in you, which first, watch this, which first dwelt in your grandmother Lois, and then your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded in you also. It's generational. Timothy, you got something. You got something. But it didn't come from you, Timothy. It came from your mother, Eunice, but she got it from Lois. And this is the thing about living passionately in faith. It's transferable. That if you live with passionate faith and zeal for God, it becomes transferable. He goes on to say, he goes on to say, therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. My mom prayed for me. My mom dedicated me. Today I honor my mom by answering the call of God in my life. You and I can honor our moms by answering the call of God in our life. 
you and I can honor our moms by embracing her faith. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Proverbs goes on to say it this way. Proverbs 23, make your father and mother happy. Give your mother a reason to be glad. Come on, let's stand to our feet. Some of you might be here today and or even watching online and you need to embrace that faith that says I'm going to stir up the gifts of God in me I'm going to embrace the faith of my mother I'm going to honor her faith because faith is transferable and God wants to deposit faith in you so he can do something in you so he can do something through you So if you're here and you need to open up your life to Christ, can I encourage you to do that, to simply invite him into your life? To simply say, Jesus, I need you in my life. If there's parts of you that you need to stir up, maybe, maybe, you, maybe you are a faithful follower of Christ, but there's gifts that need to be stirred up. There's things in you that need to be wakened and aroused and your faith needs to be activated. Can I encourage you to do that? Step out in faith right now. Lay hold of what God wants you to lay hold of. Lay hold of the promises of God. Father, I pray over this family right now. I pray over this congregation as, God, that you're stirring up in us. You're stirring up in us our faith because that's what you gave us mothers for is to teach us faith. That's why you tell us to honor our parents so that they can teach us to know you and to honor you and to live for you and, and to put our faith and trust in you. And Father, right now, whether, whether there's single moms that are here being challenged by motherhood, whether there are moms here that have raised their children and, and they're having grandchildren, or whether, God, there are, there are those here that may have lost their moms, God, and are grieving the loss of their mom, wherever they are in the spectrum, I know the Holy Spirit can minister to those needs. And that's what I'm asking right now. I'm asking, Father God, that our faith would be stirred and the Spirit would be activated as we put our faith in you. You know, church, we're just going to go into this course on worship. And as we do, can I encourage you to reach out? Make this moment your moment of connecting with God, reaching out to God. Take something from this message today and apply it to your heart. Apply it to your life. Let's worship.